This rather shapely blue thing you see behind me is the Maserati MC20. Now, the skies are very grey and the weather is horrible. It's like two degrees and really miserable outside, but I'm not going to miss the chance to drive this brand new, all singing, all dancing, mid-engined, 600 horsepower plus two-seat supercar. Now, Maserati seems to have sort of relaunched itself as a company more times than some companies launch cars. They had the Ghibli, which they decided would be good because surely everybody would want an Italian version of a BMW 5 Series. Yeah, I'm not sure they do. Levante, the SUV they launched, thinking sort of, you know, surely everybody wants an SUV. I'm not sure it's quite done for them what they want. So this time they are back with the big firepower with a bang to say Maserati is back and this time it has a supercar to prove it. So this right here is a carbon fiber passenger cell, two seats, one beside the other. In front of that is an aluminum space frame housing the suspension plus a tiny amount of luggage space. And then at the back, excuse me one moment, there's another aluminum space frame mounting the suspension, allowing a tiny bit of luggage space here. Then also what Maserati says is a new generation of twin turbocharged V6 engine. That drives the back wheels only through an eight-speed twin clutch gearbox. The same one, I think, is that is fitted to the latest generation mid-engined Corvette. But let me give you some more technical details first, then we'll have a look inside, then we'll go for a drive and see if this time Maserati's relaunch is as special as this car suggests. Now, some commentators have pointed out similarities between the block of this V6 and Alfa Romeo's V6 and even Ferrari's V8, but there are very trick, unique, bespoke cylinder heads here with pre-combustion chambers. There's more on that tech at autocar.co.uk. I'll put a link in the description. It's quite interesting. Power is 621 horsepower and torque is 538 pounds foot. The claimed weight is just 1,500 kilos. And if this car turns out to weigh that little when we put it on our scales, that will be very, very impressive. Finally, from a handling perspective, there is a mechanical limited slip differential as standard and an electronically controlled one as a two grand option which is fitted here. Right welcome to the inside then of the MC20. The first thing I would notice about it is that I think it's less dramatically designed than the inside of say a Ferrari or a McLaren or particularly a, a Lamborghini Huracan. Don't, don't know whether that matters to you or not. It doesn't matter too much to me. It feels really nicely finished with good materials and decent fit and finish. So I quite like that. It's not all plain sailing. I got in, pulled the, pulled the door down. And the first thing I noticed is my legs were very offset to the left. So there's a, the wheel arch ingress is down there. This may not be such an issue on left-hand drive cars. If you're in a left-hand drive market, you probably want the pedals a bit further over that way anyway. But here, my left peg goes pretty much onto the, onto the brake. So if you're left foot braking, no biggie. If you insist on right foot braking, it's, it feels a bit awkward over there. Good things, this steering wheel, which reminds me a bit of an Alfa Romeo Giulia GTAs, which I'll come back to in a moment, is pretty much round as wheels ought to be. The huge gear shift paddles, which got a really lovely action, are stuck to the column as well, so they don't turn. I like that too, because no matter how much turn you've got on the wheel, the gear shift paddles are always where you left them. So this is a functional cockpit from a driver's point of view. That extends to having gear selectors down here and this big drive select mode um, on the transmission tunnel. So it's got GT, Sport, Corsa, stability control off or wet, which would give it extra traction control. You can change the damper stiffness in any of those modes. GT is the interesting one. If you think this is a GT car, if you want to treat it like a GT car, I don't know, is it is it roomy enough? Is it spacious enough? There's only sort of one cup holder back here, which for a, a long-legged GT would be a curious thing. For a supercar, matters less. So it depends whether you think this is a GT car or whether it's just a sports car. There is, slightly unusually for a supercar, there is a glove box. It's not massive. There are no door pockets. And apart from this little cubby here, there's, there's not that much storage otherwise. But it is a functional, nice feeling, well-finished, well-fitted interior. I like it a lot. It's pretty clean. There's a lot on a touch screen. It's actually pretty simple to navigate and it'll also pair with your phone, which is probably what most people will do. I like it. Let's see how it translates to being a supercar or a GT car on the road. Okay, so the MC20 on the road then. You hear behind me that V6 engine. Now, do you remember a second ago I talked about this steering wheel reminding me of the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio GTA, GTA M. 
Well, there's a reason for that. And what I'd forgotten about, actually, until I was reading about this car this morning, is that there was a time when I think this car was going to be an Alfa Romeo, or the, the group hadn't quite decided whether it was going to be an Alfa or a Maserati, and eventually it's become a Maserati. Maserati says that engine is a new generation engine, they're called the Neptune engine. But don't forget, the Alfa GTA does run a twin turbocharged V6. I've got to do some investigation as to see exactly how much commonality there is between them. But there really are elements to the Alfa GTA in this car. But let's start with the engine because, you know, it's got a motor. I'm doing 25 miles an hour, second gear. It pulls, traction limited really strongly. It revs around to eight. It sounds not unlike a sort of flat plane crank V8 in a way, but just a little bit more muted. It's quite, it's quite quiet. Upshifts on this transmission are really smooth. Downshifts are not always perfect. There's sometimes a little bit of hesitation, but it's, but it's very good and it's very long geared. I'm in sixth gear at 50, at 1500 revs and it won't take seventh or eighth gear. That's how long geared it is. So if you want to know what it's like as a GT car, it is quite a long-legged cruiser. This trip computer says it's been doing 23 miles to the gallon, which for a car of this kind of performance, that's not bad, you know, is it? It's got a 350-ish mile range. I think that's pretty good at a cruise. But what really sets this car apart, and what really struck me as I started driving it, we really like the Alfa Romeo GTA and GTA M, really special cars, one of the most special cars we drove last year. This car's steering and its ride and its handling are not unlike it. It's got three drive modes, as I mentioned. So if you're in GT, you get the softest dampers. If you push that through into sport, you go to a mid damper setting, which you can then drop the dampers back to soft if you want. And then there's Corsa, which is the most hardcore setting, which brings the stiffest dampers, which you can then drop back to mid, but stay in Corsa mode. I'll be honest, on the road in the UK, you don't need anything other than the softest damper setting because body control is fantastic, but the ride is still really composed and refined it. I've spent a lot of time in the past couple of months in electric, battery electric cars, from the Pininfarina Batista through to a BMW i4. And what's really lovely about getting into a car like this is how light this car feels. It really just glides along. The steering is really lovely. It's not super quick like a Ferrari, but it does take up weight nicely just off straight ahead. It's got sort of more road feel than a Lamborghini Huracan, maybe not as much as a, as a McLaren. Brake pedal feel is, is good and progressive. It's just, it just all hangs together really nicely. And if the sort of engine and transmission are just very competent, the ride and handling are really, really special, really special. It's got all of those sort of lovely elements of the, of the Alfa GTA M, but in a lighter, mid-engined, beautifully balanced package. And that is unexpected, but also really, 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 really wonderful. So we've only got this car for a short amount of time in the UK and Maserati has said, look, please only test it on the road, which is why it's on these uh, winter tires. Don't do any track testing, don't do any performance testing, don't do any comparison testing at the moment. We said, okay, fine, all right, if, it, if you let us drive it in that way, you, we're very happy to drive it in that way. So there is more to come later this year. We want to do comparisons, we want to do some track stuff. I cannot wait to see what this car is like when you really start to play with its handling because everything I've experienced so far suggests it'll be really lovely. But I am intrigued to put it up against the car whose price is it is approaching. This is nearly 200 grand. So it is right up there in McLaren, Ferrari, Lamborghini kind of realms. And I am fascinated to see how good it really is. I'm really excited to see how good it really is. We will have more of those later in the year. So if you subscribe to the channel, if you click on the bell notification, you will never miss one. We're also at autocar.co.uk all the time. We're in news agents every Wednesday or on digital subscription. We find us on all the social media channels too. Thank you very much for joining me in what I think is has the potential to be one of the real stars of 2022. And I'll see you next time.